Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today we're taking a look at the T-Audio Monarch Mark II. I never got my hands on the original Monarch or the Clairvoyance, so this is my first go at a T-Audio tribrid design. Tribrid meaning it's got dynamic drivers, balanced armatures, and electrostatics. And my past experience with other units like the Unique Melody Mest Mark II have shown that that doesn't always result in the best sense of coherency and naturality from an IEM. So I was interested to see if the Monarch Mark II could kind of restore my faith in these multi-driver designs. Before I go into detail though about the driver setup and some of the accessories that you get with the Monarch Mark II, let's take a look at their gorgeous faceplates and the rest of their wonderful accessories and design. T-Audio who make the Monarch Mark II is a house brand for Linsol, and so I want to say thanks to Linsol for sending me out a pair of the Monarch Mark IIs to give them a try. The Monarch Mark II retail for $999 US dollars, so they're a fairly expensive IEM, but they're not in that stratospheric multi-thousand dollar range, and yet the performance is really solid as I'll talk about soon. It's not perfect, but it is really good. What you're getting for your thousand dollars is these beautiful sort of pseudo custom molded designed IEMs that sit really nicely and comfortably in the ear. They've got a fairly solid sized nozzle on the end, but even in my fairly small ear canals, they're a pretty comfortable fit. They're not an IEM where they just disappear like something like the Shores or the Audio Flies, those ones that really tightly fit into the ear with a very narrow nozzle. They're not quite as good as that, but they're still very, very comfortable overall. The look of the faceplate is absolutely gorgeous as you'll have seen in the Glamour video. And then on the inside of each shell, we've got multiple drivers at play. First of all, we've got a dynamic driver, which is handling the bass duties. We've then got six balanced armatures per side for the mid range and a pair of electrostatics for the treble. Now, when we say electrostatics in a tribrid design like this, what we're really talking about are electric drivers. And what that means is there's no high voltage energizer feeding into the earphone, like say with a pair of KSC 1200s from Shaw, but instead what you've got is a driver that's based on a static charge applied to a membrane. And then that static charge reacts to the musical signal as it goes past. So they technically are a form of electrostatic driver, but they're not exactly the same as what you see in the Shaw KSE 1200 and 1500 or in a full-size headphone like a Stax. All of those drivers within the shells of the Monarch Mark IIs combine to give you an earphone with an impedance of 36 ohms, which is relatively high for an IEM, but it's offset by a sensitivity of 108 dB, making these very easy to drive, and they can reveal some hiss on devices with slightly higher noise floors. In addition to the earphones themselves, you get a handful of really nice tips, there's a nice selection there to choose from, and you can generally get a good fit in my experience with them. And then you get the cable and the case. The case is fairly straightforward, it's a good sized case, but otherwise nothing special. What's more special for me though, is the quality of the cable. It's not that the cable itself in terms of the feel and the look of it is exceptional, so much as its functionality. It is a nice feeling cloth wrapped cable with a braid down the bottom and a simple twist up the top where it splits off to each earphone. But where things get really interesting is at the termination to the amplifier end. You see, this cable uses a system much like the recently reviewed FIO FH9, where you can pop off the termination plug at the amplifier end, like so, and change it over between a 3.5 mil, a 4.4 mil Pentacon, and also a 2.5 mil balance connection as well. So you've got all different IEM style connections covered from single ended through to both balance connections. And it's done as simply as pulling off and putting on a new plug end. At the other end of the cable, we've got simple two pin connectors. And so as I said, the cable's not exceptional in terms of its quality or its feel. It's more the versatility of that plug end that I really, really like. With that said, on the inside of this cable is a silver plated copper conductor. And I'm not always a fan of silver plated copper. And I'll talk a little bit later in the review about how the Monarch Mark II sound with a different pure copper cable. So stay tuned for that one if you want to know more. Before I talk about sound quality in general, I do want to cover off one thing, and that is that I've found with the Monarch Mark IIs that the tips did make a significant difference for me, particularly in the bass response. 
and that's not uncommon, but some earphones are more or less affected by which tips you use. In the case of the Monarch Mark IIs, I've used a combination of the stock tips, and I've also got right now fitted to them what I've found to be my favourite on these, and that's the Sedna Crystal Tips. And thank you to channel patron Redrich for sending over the crystals. So as I talk through my sound impressions of the Monarch Mark IIs, just keep in mind I've used a range of tips on these. And while the tips aren't going to vastly change the sound, they can alter things like the bass presence, the amount of treble that comes through depending on the size of the bore, which is the hole in the tip itself. So little things can change, and that's always going to be a part of the variation in different reviews and different people's perceptions of these IMs is that every person's ear canal is different, the length of the ear canal, the insertion depth allowed by the size of the nozzle and the tips, and then of course the tip choice itself. So I've tried to keep this as balanced as I can by using different sorts of tips, but most of my listening has been with the Sedna Crystals because they gave me the best seal and therefore the best bass response. I've also done testing across a range of different devices, and whilst I'm not going to call out specific devices as I go through my listening notes, I will highlight at the end a couple of my favourite devices to pair with the Monarch Mark IIs. But my listing's been done across things like the Mojo 2, the Questyle M15, the Chord Hugo TT2, and also the Hyferman EF400, which I've got coming up for review soon, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that one. With all that introduction out of the way though, let's talk about how the Monarch Mark IIs actually sound in your ears. The very first thing I noticed about these was that they sound very balanced and natural from a tonality point of view. I'll talk about later on the fact that there are some things that prevent them being as natural and as lifelike as some other IEMs that I'm going to compare them to. But in isolation, if you're just listening to these, they sound balanced, they sound natural, they sound lifelike. And the key point there is it means that they've got a tuning that's not overly peaky or troughy anywhere. There's no huge suck outs, there's no huge peaks, everything's pretty well balanced from bass right the way through to treble. They do have a slightly V or U shaped sound, so the mids are a bit less prominent than the bass and the treble, but it's not strong enough or contrasted enough that it causes any problems with naturality. That slightly V or U shaped tuning does mean that they come across a little bit forward in the upper mids and lower treble, and it's a really common tuning. I'm pretty sure it's a result of all of the Harman target research, and I don't always agree with it, but it doesn't make them bad in any way, it just doesn't go exactly to my preferences. Something else that really stood out to me just in my general listening was that despite being a pretty neutral overall sounding IEM, the Monarch Mark IIs carry a groove well. And that's a big test for me in a lot of my listening, is does this earphone get me engaged in the music? And the Monarch Mark IIs do. They're an earphone that I can very easily put into my ears, switch on a piece of music that I enjoy, and just enjoy the music. They also allow technical listening if I want it, but for pure listening enjoyment, the Monarch Mark IIs are really solid. Vocals from the Monarchs have a lovely balance of texture and clarity and delicacy, but also richness and presence as well. I mentioned before that there's a slight pullback in the mids compared to the bass and the treble, but it never gets to the point that the mids sound like they're lacking in body or weight or presence. So they're very enjoyable in that regard. On tracks that tend to be a little bit hot in the treble, where they've actually been recorded a bit hot I mean, the Monarch Mark II can start to show signs of sibilance, but that's not a reflection of the IEM so much as the fact that they're representing what's coming through from the recording. On normally recorded tracks, I had no problems at all with sibilance from these, and so it's really just that they're showing you what's going on in the recording and not sugarcoating anything. The bass from the Monarchs has a nice sense of presence and punch, but it's also very well controlled, and I wouldn't say that these are in any way a bassy IEM. If you hook them up to a fuller sounding source or play music that's got a lot of bass content, they've absolutely got the chops to handle it, but from a neutral source on a fairly neutral recording, they're going to give you a neutral representation. That said, they've also got amazingly good deep bass extension. One of the tracks that scrolled through as I was listening was I Should Have Known by Julian Lennon, and that track has this interesting bass note in it from a bass drum that really stretches right down low, and the rumble that came through from the Monarch Mark IIs was really, really impressive. So as I said, they're not a bassy IEM, but they've got the bass extension and presence and control to deliver it when it's there. If I had to make one small criticism of the overall tonal response of these, it's that the slight V or U-shaped design means that they do somewhat separate the bass from the rest of the signatures. So you kind of get a sense that there's bass, and there's treble, and there's a bit of mid-range in the middle, and there's just a tiny bit of separation of them. It's very slight, and I'm only commenting on it because I've done critical listening with these. From a musical enjoyment point of view, it doesn't even come into the picture, but if you are comparing them to other earphones, which I will shortly, 
you might notice that there is this little bit of separation between the bass and the treble frequencies, and it can make for a slightly incoherent sound when compared to some smoother, flatter response IMs, but we'll get to that soon. Moving on from tonality, the staging and imaging from the Monarchs is very strong. I wouldn't describe it as exceptional, but it's very good. They produce a sound stage that's relatively wide for an IEM. It probably goes just slightly beyond the ears. And then they provide some sense of depth, but it's more actually in terms of height. So what they tend to do is if something is further back in the sound stage or further forward in the sound stage, you do get a little sense of that, but it's also stretching them higher and lower in the sound stage as well. And so again, from a technical listening point of view, that can be slightly off-putting, but it's not extreme enough that from a musical enjoyment point of view, you're ever really going to notice it. What you're actually going to hear if you just plug them in for pure enjoyment is a good sense of separation of individual sounds, which allows you to hear the whole sonic picture in a coherent but well-separated mix. And on that note, what I'd say about the overall coherency of the Monarch Mark IIs, and thinking back to something like the Mest Mark II, is that I think the Monarch Mark II does a pretty good job of staying coherent with its imaging, even though there are some slight influences happening as a result of the multi-driver design. And what I mean by that is that there are some instruments that get placed a little bit differently by the Monarch Mark II when compared to a high-quality single-driver design, but it's never bad, it's never distracting or off-putting. My biggest complaint about the Mest Mark II was that it absolutely put things in strange places. One of the examples I talked about in that review was that the Mest Mark II at times would separate the textual information from an instrument, let's say a guitar, or I think it was a mandolin at the time, it can separate the textual information like the strumming and the plucking of strings and put that here, whilst the resonance of the body of the instrument would sit, say, here. And so you can clearly hear that it doesn't actually mesh together as one instrument because of the way the different drivers are handling different frequencies. The good news is that I never heard anything like that from the Monarch Mark II, and whilst they do some interesting things with the image placement, they never completely pulled apart the mix in the way the Mest Mark II sometimes did. And so I'd say overall, the tonality, the staging, the general presentation from the Monarchs is really, really strong. They're an earphone that in isolation I thoroughly enjoyed from multiple devices across multiple tracks. And that to me is often the key. If I think back again to the Mest Mark II review, one of the things that really stood out to me with those was it was very track dependent whether I enjoyed them or whether they sounded weird. In the Monarch Mark II, no matter what track I put through them, they always sounded good. With a great recording, they sound exceptional. With an older, poorer recording, they sound okay. And indeed, most IEMs and most earphones or headphones are just going to sound okay with an average recording. So in that sense, they're a very solid performer, and without doing any comparisons just yet, I'd say they're a really good option. But before you decide to slap down $1,000 and buy a pair of Mark IIs, let me give you just a couple of comparisons to a couple of other single driver designs. Now I know a lot of you have been eagerly awaiting a review of the Sennheiser IE600s, and the good news is it's coming very soon. I've got the IE600 here now, and I've started doing my listening to it. Because the IE600, that's the Sennheiser IE600 for anyone that's not familiar, because the IE600 is an $899 US dollar IEM, it seemed like a really good and obvious comparison for a $100 more IEM to go up against something slightly cheaper and using a single driver design. And so again, for those not familiar with the IE600, it's a single dynamic driver earphone up against a multi-driver earphone, not just using multiple drivers like multiple balanced armatures, but using dynamics and balanced armatures and electrostatics. And that brings lots of challenges for coherency, as I've already said. So I was keen to see, is spending a little bit less for a well-tuned single driver going to be better than buying the Monarch Mark II and all of the complexities that come with them? One of the tracks that happened to come on while I was testing these was I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For by U2. Now this is an album being the Joshua Tree that I've always felt is just a little bit lacking in dynamics in terms of its mixing. And probably what I should specifically say is I feel like it's a little bit lean in its mix compared to what I'd like to hear, and therefore that needs to be taken into account when we're talking about the bass reproduction from both of these IEMs. I say that now because it's going to become relevant in just a moment. Starting off with the Monarch Mark II, and it does a wonderful job of separating out the guitars in the left and the right channel, and then also when the tambourine comes in, it's beautifully focused just slightly off to the left of center. But the key thing is that everything coming through in the introduction to I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, has got tactility and articulation, it's got this really nice sense of energy and clarity to it. The bass guitar when it comes in has a decent sense of punch to it. It is a little bit light on, but it feels like it's punchy and well controlled, even if I would have liked a little more body from it. 
And that's what I'm saying about the recording being slightly to blame here. It's hard to know if it's the recording that's a touch lean, or if I would have just liked a little tiny bit more from the Monarch Mark IIs. But we'll get to that more when we talk about the IA600 on this same track. When Bono's vocals come in, they're also really nicely focused, nicely textured, really well detailed. And something I noticed which I found quite interesting was that the vocals were slightly higher than the tambourine, and also slightly to the left. So it was almost like the vocals were just here for me, the tambourine was just here, and it made me wonder if maybe Bono was actually playing it and doing the vocals in the same take. Either that or it's just been mixed in that way, but either way I found it quite interesting. It is also unusual to hear the vocals just ever so slightly off center. And when I listened to the i600s, I heard the same thing. I haven't checked to see if it's the recording or if maybe it's my ears. I've just recently done some plane travel. So maybe they're still balancing out again. I'm not sure. But either way, it was interesting to hear from both earphones how well they both managed to focus that image of the vocal and also the tambourine right next to it. In summary, listening to the Monarch Mark IIs on this track, I once again felt like their tonality was pretty well balanced, pretty well neutral, but with that slight tilt, as I said before, towards the upper mids and the treble. And that's a really common tuning these days, thanks to the Harman target curve, which I know a lot of you love. I'm not necessarily a fan of the extra energy that I feel it puts into the upper mid range, but it's definitely an enjoyable and easy to listen to tuning in the case of the Monarch Mark IIs. Having given those a good listen though, it was time to jump over to the slightly cheaper IE600s and see what a single dynamic driver could do on the same track. During that opening passage, the IE600 was clearly just a little bit less articulated and less focused on the clarity and the texture of those guitars and the tambourine. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. In some cases, what I find is these tunings that focus on that upper mid-range and treble can sometimes over enhance the textures, which can be fun to listen to when you're first getting them, but can actually get a bit fatiguing and a bit tiresome after time. And case in point here for me was that when the tambourine did come in on the IE600s, I felt like its slightly reduced emphasis in the treble actually helped me to get a sense of where the tambourine was in space more clearly. So even though some of the texture was pulled back just a little bit, we're talking maybe two or three percent of the texture was gone, but in the i600, it made the sound of the tambourine much more clearly resolved. And so what I mean by that is that it was almost like the tambourine, if you think of this as a physical visual image, it was almost like the tambourine was over sharpened slightly by the Monarch Mark IIs, and that created some artifacts to its sound that made it actually a bit less easy to imagine in space. Whereas the i600s didn't try to over sharpen it, and as a result, made it seem more tangible and more present in space. While we're talking about presence, the bass guitar when it came in also had more presence from the i600. It felt a bit more tactile, a bit more solid. And while some might say that the i600 is going too warm in comparison to the Monarch Mark II, I did find that I preferred the bass presentation from the i600s. And that again comes back to the mixing of this particular track. As I've already mentioned, the vocal and the tambourine on the i600 was also positioned slightly to the left of center. And again, they were slightly separated, but clearly close together. What really stood out to me with the i600 though, was that I was hearing details through the mid-range that I didn't notice from the Monarch Mark II. And that again comes back to this question of tuning. I'm not against having specific target curves, whether it's the Harman curve or a personal preference curve, I'm not against those things by any stretch. But what this comparison really highlights for me is that there are different benefits in different tunings. With the Monarch Mark II's tuning, it's bringing forward these treble details, this textual information, and that's great, it's interesting, it's fun to listen to. But then when you go over to the i600 with its different tuning and its different presentation, what you hear from that is a different set of details, a different set of texture. And in the case of the i600, that's through the mid-range versus the Monarch Mark II, which focuses it higher up in the range. And so both are excellent, neither is right or wrong, they're just different presentations. And indeed, as I went back and forth between the two of these on that particular track, but also other tracks as well, I feel like the Monarch Mark II often comes across as being more textured and detailed, as you'd understand, but also a little bit thinner, a little bit less lifelike. The sound is wonderfully delicate and detailed, but I feel like it lacks the body and presence that I actually want to create the illusion that I'm in the room with the musicians. And that's where I think the i600 does that part of the equation better. And so for me, I personally lean slightly towards the IE600 because I like how natural and lifelike it sounds, but I can also see why a lot of people are going to love the Monarch Mark II, and I still really like it. It manages to balance this sense of detail and clarity and texture, 
without ever getting lean or overly neutral or sterile. It's enjoyable. As I said earlier on, it carries a groove well. So both are fantastic IEMs, but I would give the nod ever so slightly to the i600. And so that got me thinking about another comparison along the same veins in the IE900. Now apologies if you're looking for more diversity of comparisons in this review. I can only ever review and compare what I have here with me. And the only other IEM that I have that's in the rough ballpark of the Monarch Mark IIs is the aforementioned IE900. And so I apologize that we've got two Sennheiser IEMs going up against the Monarch Mark IIs, but hopefully you'll have familiarity with either the 600 or the 900, and that'll give you some context for the Monarch Mark II. I'm chatting to various retailers and suppliers at the moment about getting more IEMs in this kind of ballpark $1,000 range. And so do stay tuned, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more comparisons. I hope to be able to provide more comparisons of IEMs like the Monarch Mark II, the IE900, IE600, etc. in the coming months. For now though, let's put the IE900 as my favourite go-to IEM up against the Monarch Mark II. Now I should mention my absolute favourite IEM is the Shure KSE 1200, but because of its energizer, it gets a bit less use for me and it's also a lot more expensive than the Monarch Mark II. And so when I say the i 900 is my favourite, it's my favourite in the sense that I can grab it, plug it into any device, and off I go. The i 900 is a more expensive IEM than the Monarch Mark II, and it comes in at about $1,300. US So you are spending $300 extra for the Sennheiser i 900 and that's why I was interested to see if there was any benefit in going up from the Monarch Mark II, rather than maybe going down to the i 600 I will, of course, do a direct comparison of the 600 and the 900 when I get to that review, and so don't think that this comparison gives away everything there is to say about that review, because I'm only comparing each of these directly with the Monarch Mark II. And with that in mind, let's have a chat about one of the tracks that I tried between the IE900 and the Monarch Mark II, and that was The Last Time by Wynton Marsalis and Eric Clapton. This track has a lot of different instruments going on, it's a live recording, so you get that wonderful sense of realism where things haven't been artificially positioned in space so much by the post-production. And what you hear from the Monarch Mark II is a great sense of placement of all the instruments and also texture. The trumpet, the guitar, the clarinet, and then Eric Clapton's vocals as well, all of them have this great sense of texture and clarity that clearly defines each instrument in its own way. The tonality from the Monarch Mark II once again sounds pretty accurate, albeit with that slight emphasis to the upper mids and lower treble. And as I listened to this track on the Monarchs, it was extremely difficult to pick any holes. Everything sounded like it was where it should be, everything sounded true to life, it was just a really, really enjoyable listen. Switching over to the IE900s, and I suddenly heard what I was missing from the Monarch Mark IIs. And this is an illustration for me of why it's valuable to have comparisons like these and these A-B sorts of tests, but it's also important to remember that if you're not doing A-B comparisons, an IEM like the Monarch Mark II is going to be incredibly enjoyable. So when I compared them with the IE900s, what I heard that I was missing from the Monarchs was a sense of presence and body in the sound. The Monarch still sounded wonderful, and if I'd never listened to the IE900, I would have just thought it was a fantastic rendition. But when I plugged in the IE900s, what I suddenly heard was that there was more to the sound of the clarinet, the trumpet, the vocal, the guitar. There was more to those sounds than I was hearing from the Monarch Mark II. And namely what was missing for me was that sense of presence, that sense of body and weight to all of the sounds. Suddenly with the IE900s, what I was hearing was tangible. It was like I could reach out and touch all of the sounds. Whereas in the case of the Monarchs, it was like a very, very well-delivered recording. So the IE900s were lifelike, and the Monarchs were a bit more recording-like. Both were fantastic in their own way, but the IE900 definitely grabbed my attention more. One small trade-off that you get, though, is that the IE900 does pull the staging in a little bit compared to the slightly brighter tuning of the Monarchs. So if you're a fan of a more expansive stage, if you like something like an HD800S sound, where it really sort of pulls things apart a bit more, that's where the Monarchs do tend towards. They're not as big as the HD800S, but they do lean a bit more in that direction. And so as always, there's going to be trade-offs. Anytime you get two excellent IEMs, neither is going to be perfect. They're both going to have their strengths and weaknesses. And so for me, what I find is the Monarch Mark II draws my attention to the finer details in the sound. It gives me a bigger sense of soundstage overall. Whereas the IE900 gives that sense of tactility and presence to the sound, but it does come with a trade-off of a little bit less of the micro details compared to the Monarch Mark II, particularly in the treble registers, and also an ever so slightly smaller soundstage. It's only a small shift, but it's a little bit more intimate than the larger sounding Monarch. And in fact, how I would sum these up 
is for me the Monarch is a little bit like a microscope approach to the sound, in the sense that it helps you to hone in on the really really fine details in the music, whereas the IE900 and indeed the IE600 as well, they're more like a large high res screen in your living room where you're going to sit back and take in the whole picture. Both approaches are very interesting and very enjoyable, but for me I do find the IE600 and IE900 approach to be a little bit more enjoyable. The Monarch Mark II is a little bit more of a novelty to me, and I don't mean that in a negative way, so much as it's an IEM that is an interesting sound, but not as much of a natural sound as the IE600 and IE900. Before I wrap things up though, I should also mention that the Monarchs to me are an IEM that does benefit from a little bit of tweaking. What I specifically mean by that is I tried the Monarchs with the recently released Effect Audio Ares S cable, which is a pure copper cable, it's a really nice cable, I've got the review coming very soon. And I found that going from the SPC cable, that silver plated copper, that comes with the Monarch Mark II, and moving over to a pure copper cable, I felt that just helped the sound a little bit. It's not a huge shift, it's not going to completely change everything I've just said about them, but it took away a tiny bit of the extra kind of over sharpening effect that I talked about before, and gave just a little hint of extra presence and body in the sound. Now changing the cable does mean that you're giving up this wonderful plug system that I raved about before, and so it is a bit of a question whether you want to trade that off, but if you happen to have a quality copper cable with two pin plugs at the IEM end, and you want to get yourself a pair of Monarch Mark IIs, I would recommend trying them with the high quality copper cable. For me, it's a slight upgrade on their sound. The other thing that I'd recommend with the Monarch Mark II is to pair them up with a richer, warmer sounding device. Some of my absolute favourite, most enjoyable and compelling listening sessions with the Monarchs were with the Questyle M15 dongle. It's got this wonderful, rich, full and tactile sound, and that combined with a slightly more neutral, slightly less weighty sound of the Monarch Mark IIs was a match made in heaven. Likewise, the recently received Hyferman EF400, and yes, the review for that one's coming soon too, pairing up the Monarch Mark II with the EF400 is another wonderful combination. Again, because the EF400 has a slightly meaty sound to it, it's got a bit of body and a bit of presence, which pairs really well with the Monarch's tuning. And so keep that in mind when you're considering my impressions and what else you read around the internet, is that the Monarch Mark II could lean anywhere from being super analytical and cool if you've got a really lean source chain, all the way through to having some richness, some body, and excellent bass performance if you've got a source chain that's going to bring that out of them. As it is, I'd describe kind of their neutral state from a neutral device as being a fairly neutral sound with a slightly V or U shaped signature. Again, that slight emphasis in the upper mids and the treble means that they lack a bit of weight with a truly neutral device. Some people are going to love that, others are going to wish for a bit more body in the sound. And so what I'd say is that if you're in the market for an IEM around about that $1,000 range, the Monarch Mark II is the one that I'd absolutely suggest you consider. I personally prefer the more tactile, weighty presentation of the IE600 and the IE900, but they're also an IEM that could live very happily alongside either the 600 or the 900 from Sennheiser, because they're quite a different sound and still a very, very good sound. Thankfully, none of the coherency issues that I was worried about really came into play with the Monarchs. I thought they delivered everything with a wonderful sense of naturality and realism from a coherency and image placement point of view. And indeed, in isolation, I wouldn't have picked their frequency response as lacking anything either. It's only when I tried those other IEMs that I heard what else it could sound like. And so hopefully this review has painted a good picture for you as to what to expect with the Bonoak Mark II. Hopefully it's helped you work out if they fit your taste and your existing source chains. And as always, if you found this review useful, helpful, or just entertaining, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button and consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm.